We thank you, Lord God, for tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May your Holy Spirit, God, be in this sanctuary, Father. May you move upon your people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, first and foremost, family, well, welcome. Come on, welcome to Wednesday night, KCG. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, first and foremost, I want to give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody give it up for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we give you glory and honor and praise, oh, God. Come on, none of us will be here without Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? And next, I want to give honor to my precious pastors, Pastors John and Nidra Hawkins. Such a blessing to my life and your life as well. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's pray right before we get into the message tonight. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for your, your message, God, that you have for every single person, God, in the sound of my voice, God. God, we pray that the people's hearts will be open, God, that your utterance, God, will flow out of me, Father God, to speak to your people, Lord. May not one person leave the same, God, but, but, but may they leave changed, transformed, oh God, full of your revelation and fire, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We'll give God one more hand clap. Come on, give it up for one more time. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all excited for tonight? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, God has something special for you. Praise God. So tonight, we're going to talk about the rapture. Come on. Come on, somebody. Hey, praise God. Give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody say, I'm going to be ready for that rapture. Come on, now, what is the rapture? Well, the rapture is an event that God promised us that he was one day going to come back for his people. How many of y'all are God's people tonight? I'm going to say, well, not, not just tonight, but hopefully every night, every day, all right? Make sure, you, make sure your neighbor is good, okay? All right? But it's an event that God is going to come back for his people. He's, he's gonna, the Bible says he's going to rapture. He's going to, uh, uh, well, in the Greek, it's, it's harpazo. But what that means is that he's going to come back and take you. And some of you have heard the scripture before. It's in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Some of you all just blink. That's how fast the rapture is going to be. And uh, all of us need to be ready. Can you say amen? amen. How many of y'all are ready right now? Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I believe you are. Amen. And if you're not, you're going to be by the end of this message. Praise God. <laughs> now, one of the greatest promises in the Bible is the promise from Jesus to his disciples. All of you are disciples here. Amen. That someday he will, come, he will come again to take us to heaven with him. And how many of y'all want that to be said of you? Amen. Now, how many of y'all know that God never lies? Amen. When Jesus makes a promise, how many of y'all, God has made a promise to you and he always brought it to pass? Amen. That it's, it's never God's problem with a promise. It's never God's issue with a covenant that may come to pass or may not come to pass. But you have to be at the right place. You have to be, the right, be there at the right time, and you got to do your part. Because God's going to do his part, but you have to make sure that you are following the instructions that God wants you to do. Can you say amen? So, the, so God's coming back for everybody. The promise is for how many of y'all know that Jesus, when he came, he died for everybody. Everybody has the opportunity to receive Jesus, to be washed in the blood and have forgiveness. Can you say amen? But it's a choice. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's a choice. So God's going to be there. But are you? But I prophesy in the name of Jesus that every single person under the sound of my voice will be there at the time of the rapture. God will not be late. You will not be late. But you'll be there right on time. Come on, your spirit right. Your mind right. Waiting for Jesus. Can you say hallelujah? That's you say hallelujah. hallelujah. Has somebody ever made a promise to you? They will come back and pick you up. <laughs> and they never did. <laughs> oh, Lord, put my feet up, my hands up. My head is already up. My God. 
But somebody said, that's not Jesus. And maybe it wasn't in the situations of somebody picking you up, but what about a promise? Oh, I'm going to give you $5. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to let you hold something real quick tomorrow. Just hit me up, text me, whatever. And I'll make sure it's right there. And has that ever happened to any of you all in here where you're waiting on, oh, man, that they're going to give it to me today? You already got in your mom and get some groceries with this. I'm going to do this with it. That joint never came. And now you're looking on apps, on <laughs> apps like earning to see if you can get some money real quick before your paycheck. <laughs> Come on. But that, <laughs> if, if you know about it, but I'm, that's not Jesus. That's not God. If he says he's going to be somewhere, he's going to be there. If he made a promise to you, it's going to come to pass. Can you say amen? Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Point number one, do not be troubled. Now, God said that for a reason. Now, how many of y'all know when, when, when Jesus told that to his disciples, do not be troubled? How many of y'all know that it was, a, it was a time where Jesus was right, he was getting ready to go to the cross? How many people was there with them at the cross? It was just him. Everybody pretty much left. I think the woman had came later. But everybody, I mean, Peter denied him. It was a, and and if, if you got caught and, that said, and you, you said that you were with him, they were going to do you like Jesus. They was going to stone you, scourge you, kill you. Now, I'm not saying any of y'all are going through that right now, right? But are y'all going, have y'all gone through troubling times? Y'all you know, serving Jesus, going to church, following the vision. And, and, you know, and you got the devil, the enemy, you know, coming at your finances, coming at your family. And it feels like turbulence. Y'all been in the airplane before? <laughs> you want to get that terrible? What, man, what is that? Man, they got, the, they got the right pilot on here? Like, what's, like, like what's going on? So Jesus said you will go through tribulation. But he said this, do not be troubled. Somebody said do not be troubled. Jesus has given you the ultimate promise. Right next to Jesus, which that's the greatest promise. Come on. You don't got to spend eternity in the opposite place in hell. Come on. You know, burning forever, the lake of fire. But the opposite of that is the lake of blessing. Praise God. Amen. Come on, somebody say, that's where I'm going. Hey, I got my mansion. Come on. I got a lake of blessing right behind my mansion. I got a whole city called the lake of blessings. Come on. It's called the living water. Praise God. It all works together. Amen. So right next to Jesus, God has given you his ultimate promise. That he was going to come back and get you. Now, we have to be ready all the time. But there's going to come a moment when the, in the twinkling of an eye. So go ahead and blink real quick. I know you're already blinking, but it's going to be that quick. It's going to be quicker than this, but it's going to be that quick. And if you're not ready, you'll be left behind. And if you're ready, God's going to take you. Everybody say, I'm going to be ready on that day. John chapter 14 Verse 1 to 3. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. How many of y'all know that, the, that, the, that the God, the Son, the Holy Spirit, there are three persons in one? All right, if you, if you didn't know that before, now you know. If you don't know, now you know. All right, there's three persons in one. So God said, you believe in God, believe also in me. You believe God's word, believe also my words. Now, how you know if God was getting ready to tell you that, I'm listening. I'm like, man, what, what Christ finna say? He's talking about, you believe in God, believe also in me. And you're going to tell me something about the rapture? Come on, that means I'm going to be listening. Can you say amen? amen? Now, when I'm getting ready to read to you, he only mentioned this a, a, a few times in the Bible about coming to take his people, about what that's going to look like. What, 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 am I, what am I going to my father, Jesus, what am I going to my father for to do to receive you later? It's only a few places in the word of God, and this is one of them that we're going to read to you, and you want to make sure you're listening. Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> in my father, so let your heart not be troubled. All that stuff you're going through, don't be troubled. Come on, be encouraged. This time on earth is, is but a vapor. It's not that long. 
You even hear my pastor talk about, come on, you know, if you're 30, come on, 10 years, 40, 10. I mean, but how, how much, how much, how, how fast does time go? I mean, some of y'all it was just 20, 22. I mean, I've been, I've been in here with DC for since 2018. I mean, that went by quick. I worked for almost five years now. Come on, time, time is just going by. But when you're working for God, you know, it's, it's all a blessing. But you also want to be aware. You want to be prepared. Can you say amen? amen? So don't be troubled. Come on, if, 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 if Pastor says you do anything, the Holy Spirit is talking to you about certain things, and it feels a little tight, feels a little troubling, come on, but do it, do it with encouragement. Do it with faith. Do it with joy. Because you know that your Savior is coming back for you. And you want to make sure that you are following Christ like, like, like the disciples. Can you say amen? amen? And not be left behind, which that will not be you in Jesus' name. So God says, in my Father's house are many mansions. Think about that. It's many mansions. Have you ever sat and meditated on that? There's many. He didn't say houses. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't say little huts. Now, what I think about is, is, is the, the crib show. I, that, I, that's what I think. Because God, he said he had streets of gold. He didn't need the streets of gold, but God wanted it. <laughs> and he put it, in his, he put it in his house. <laughs> and he made all the plans and all that. But, but God says, I had this for you too. I got a mansion. I got the universe. I'm going to give you some cities. Come on, some cities up in here. Come on, praise God. The, 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 the Blake City, come on. The Blakes, come on. And put your last name on there. I can't go, I can't go there, everybody. Praise God. So he said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. That's powerful. If it was not so, he would have told you. But because he told you, it's so. All those things that God has promised you, if it were not so, he would have told you. He would have told you it ain't going to come to pass. But if he says it's going to come to pass, if he said, I got this for you, Thomas, I got this business for you, then God, that means that God's going to bring it to pass. I would have told you it wasn't. But God said that he is. Can you say amen? Everybody said he is for me. Hallelujah. So I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Come on, imagine God talking to you. I will come again. I will come again and receive you to myself. Who can resist God? Only person that can resist God is who? What do you say? Self. Self. Because you got a choice. Everybody say, I got a choice. Come on. I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am. Come on. I've heard, the pastor talked about that there's like a different levels in heaven. Come on, where I am, the highest of the heavens, wherever, wherever, that, wherever that is. Praise God. Where I am, there you, there you may be also. This is a great passage of scripture for Jesus' words were the words of God. I was just saying that if you believe in God, believe also in my words. I know it could have been hard for the disciples to hear and really hear what Jesus was saying because he looked like, because Christ looked like a man. He flesh, long hair, I believe he had a beard. I know he didn't have a goatee like, like, like me and shaved like that, but you know, he had a beard, long hair, you know, robe on. Like a regular man, you would probably see walking. So they, they really had to pay attention to what Christ was saying. Wait, believe in God, you believe also in me. My God. But even if that's hard for you to believe, come on. You got to stick with it. Come on. You got to stick with the vision of this house. Come on, stick with Jesus. Don't give up on him. And then he's giving you his Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you from within. Can you say amen? amen. For Jesus' words were the words of God, words that will never pass away. Matthew 5, 18, if you'd like to write that down. It will never pass away. The Bible says earth will pass away before my words will pass away. Oh, yeah. Woo, my God. Jesus. So before God's words will pass, the earth, everything that you see will pass. That's heavy. If you don't think it's heavy, I think it's heavy. <laughs> At the time, Jesus was warning his disciples and followers that he would soon go to heaven where his father's house is located. So don't go worry, family. Keep being faithful. Amen. He also guaranteed 
He will come again and receive you to himself. That where he is, there you may be also. You want to be that also. Come on. You don't want to be left out of that. We're going to party in heaven, mansions. Y'all going to be visiting each other's mansions and homes. All that. Come on. Well, this is not the first time God promised he will come in what we would call the second coming of Christ, which is mentioned more than 300 times in the Bible. This is the first time he or anyone else referred to the rapture phase of his coming. As we will soon see, we have good reason to believe that the return of Christ is very close to take place. How many of y'all know that? And it could even occur in our lifetime. Now, many of y'all know, I hope you know, that God spoke to our pastor that, what do you say, that the rapture could what? At any moment. And look at COVID. I mean, there's so much stuff that's been going on. Come on, COVID. I mean, you go into stores, it's cashless now. Come on. Next thing you know, I mean, I mean uh, Am uh, Amazon has a thing where, where you can, um, not your car, but scan, you'll scan your hand, all that stuff like that. So how close are we? Well, God already spoke to our pastor. It can happen at any moment. So everybody say, I'm going to be ready. Even if it was tonight, I'm going to be ready. Praise God. Amen. So number one. It says, do not be troubled. You don't gotta, you don't gotta uh, fear. Oh my God, he's coming back. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. No, you know the vision. You got the Bible. How many pages in that Bible? About ten thousand pages. How much more help do you need? My God. <laughs> and you gotta, on, you gotta uh, uh, now. I think I said, but you got a pastor for the Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, you hear Miss Michelle always talking about the church, and I've never been in a church like this for the fire and the presence of God. Come on. You can't find this everywhere, so you have more enough reasons to be ready on that day. Come on, give it up for Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So point number two, God is preparing for you an eternal home right now. I didn't say yesterday. I didn't say when you first got saved. I didn't say tomorrow. He's doing it right now. God is, is putting, putting all the bricks, all the jewels, gold, silver, precious stones. That ain't come out of my mind. That's in the scriptures. Gold, silver, precious stones. You don't want wood, hay, or stubble. And he's putting that on your house right now. Every good thing that you do, come on, coming to church faithfully, following the vision faithfully, even when you don't want to do it, you still do it. Because what did God say? Don't be troubled. Come on, don't give up. Keep going. I know some of y'all, you know, played sports or whatever before, or, 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 or exercise, worked out to some degree, right? How many of you know it can get hard sometimes? Come on, push. Oh, push. Oh. Your eyeballs going to pop out. Come on. But how many of y'all know that the result's going to be good? So how much more when you do it for Jesus? Bodily exercise profit little. Come on. But your spirit, man, exercise profits much in this life and the next. And they can determine how big your mansion is. Praise God. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. So everybody say, I'm going to keep going. So God's preparing for you an eternal home right now. In his promise, Jesus said there are many dwelling places in the Father's house. And that he himself, who is also the creator of earth and the heavens, according to Colossians 1, 14 to 18. If you want to write that down, Colossians chapter 1, verses 14 to 18. That he will go there to prepare a place for you. This means that ever since his return to heaven, listen to this, Jesus has been building a place for us that we will occupy. How long is that, family? How long does it take to build a house on the earth? Average. Some, uh, you know, year. I mean, it's, they build condos. My God. Right. Right. But we will be with him as well. Think of it. 
So he built this earth in a moment of time. How long did it take God to build the earth and possibly the universe? About six days, and he rested on the seventh day, right? And there's many beautiful places on the earth and the universe. Can you imagine the beauty of the place? He will have spent some 2,000 years. Come on, say 2,000. Woo! Come on, and this ain't, this ain't uh, Bo Dilly building you a place. This is God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Come on. So you got to tell somebody, don't be troubled. Come on, don't be troubled. Come on, God's coming back for me. Come on, come on, God's coming back for me. How much of a shame would it be if God came back, somebody wasn't ready, and he has a, he has a city for somebody? Come on, you got to endure to the end, and you will be there, amen? Hallelujah. So it's too marvelous. You can't even you can't even imagine that how that would look for God to prepare a place for you for two thousand years. Some of y'all might have your own universe. I don't even know, but it's gonna be marvelous. Can you say, man? Come on, <laughs> praise God. There was once a man named Dr. Henry Morris. He authored the book The Revelation Record. Dr. Morris, who had a Ph.D. degree and was well-schooled in science, reported that according to his mathematical calculations, the New Jerusalem will be large enough to accommodate at least 20 billion people with a home about the size of one-third of a mile cubed. And that's just the New Jerusalem. There will also be a new heaven and a new earth. Come on. So we know what God was doing. Been doing for the past 2,000 years. Yeah. God was building all of this. A new heaven. Not only, come on, when you have a mansion. Come on, when, when, when you get to heaven right now. But what, what's, what's in the new heavens? What's in the new earth? Only God knows. We can't even imagine it. And he took 2,000 even more to build that for you. Everybody say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So point number one, do not be troubled. Jesus has given you the ultimate promise. Keep your head up. Stay encouraged. Stay faithful in the house of God. Follow the vision of this church. Humble yourself before your pastors. Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> number two, God is preparing for you an eternal home right now. So you don't want to leave that home to somebody else. Amen. Come on. But you want to stay faithful to what God has you doing on this earth. Amen. You want to work. Come on, work so you can get as much material as you can. Come on, and it's going to meet you on the other side. Amen. Amen. That's what you're here for. You already saved. You are you already going to heaven. So right now you're just getting some, you know, getting some souls to come with you. Praise God. Amen. And, and building your condo, your mansion, your cities. Hallelujah. And it's going to be full of gold, silver, and precious stones. Hallelujah. Number three, God has a history of bringing promises to pass. Somebody say, check the track record. Woo! Come on. Come on. Give it up for Jesus. Come on. Give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let me know today that God, your God, somebody say, my God. my God. Your God has a history of bringing promises to pass. Come on, so God is not a lie. The Bible says that God is not a lie. I'm not a man that I should lie, nor the son of man that I should repent. Hath thou said it, will I not do it? And will I not make it good? Come on. Don't the Bible say that? Come on. Let's go. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said, say it again. Yes, I will say it again. Praise God. Your God, my God, has a history of bringing promises to pass. All he has to do is say it out of his mouth. But see, that's why, you know, God, he may not, 
say too much audibly. Because he knows once, they, once he says it, it's got to come to pass. That the whole universe has to align with that audible voice that he just said. That's why often, often he'll speak silently. <laughs> Check the track record. Hallelujah. Not, Le not LeBron James. Come on, not Michael Jordan. Sorry, sorry children, for all y'all in here. But you're going to hear about God's track record tonight. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Come on, not Michael Phelps' track record. Even though it's real good. But nobody can do it like Jesus. Come on, nobody can do it like your father. Come on, can you say amen? Hallelujah. When we consider that Jesus accurately, come on, he, come on, he, uh, accurate, you know, basketball shooter, and an accurate pastor, come on. They, they didn't just do it, they did it accurately. Or somebody accurate shooting a bow and arrow, come on, they didn't just do it. They did a bullseye accurately. Jesus accurately fulfilled all. Somebody say all. 109 of the prophecies about his first coming. So what does that even mean? That you can believe with certainty that Jesus will come again just as he promised. And those already came to pass. Those already fulfilled. That's why God is not worried. If you ever seen Jesus, he has a, he, he's full of joy. He has a smile on his face. Because he knows that his word's going to come to pass. He knows the end result. But you must know the same. Come on, you must know it for yourself. Can you say amen? amen. amen. So is God coming back to get you? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That's a promise. That's not of the 109, pro that's actually an extra prophecy that has to come to pass. Yeah. But you have to make sure, everybody say, I got to make sure that my spirit is right. Come on, that I'm doing what God's telling me to do. And my pastors. So I can make sure that when Jesus comes back, that I'm going to meet him in the air. Come on, give it up for Jesus. Give it up for Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody just lift your hands and just thank, thank him for this message. And tell God, thank you for helping you get ready. Come on, that, that, that God's not done with you yet. Come on, just thank him. Thank, th th thank God, just thank God for his Holy Spirit that he's helping you. He's leading you and guiding you. Come on, that, that some of y'all could not, not be here tonight, not be in the church anymore, but you're still here. God is still working on you. Come on, God, because God has something for you to get. Come on. God, thank you for my mansion. Thank you for the home that you have for me. And you're going you're gonna to come back and receive me. Hallelujah. Amen. So out of those prophecies, in fact, that is how we know without a doubt that he is the one and only son of God. For no one in the history of the world even comes close to the fulfilling all the prophecies in the Bible that are about the coming Messiah. Come on, not Buddha. Come on, not Confucius. Whatever God you may believe or not believe anymore in. But only Jesus Christ, only the Messiah, the Son of God. Can you say hallelujah? For example... He must be a man. How many of you know that Christ was a man? He wasn't a man, but he became a man for you. Everybody say, for me. He must be of the seed of Abraham. He was of the seed of Abraham. He must be of the tribe of Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah. He fulfilled that. Now, I won't go through 109 tonight, but, but you can on your own time, praise God. He must be of the seed of, of David. He was of the seed of David. Further narrowing down those who could possibly claim to be the Messiah. How many of y'all know it doesn't even come close? It doesn't even, it's matchless. There's no match. There's no competition. 
And that same God promised that he said, I will come back and receive you to myself. Where I go, you will be there also. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Can you say amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said all those things 700 years before Jesus was born. How old, how old are we? I mean, 700, my Lord. It was, this was said well before those events even took place. And some of those are, are still yet to take place. The prophet Micah predicted that the Messiah would be born in the little town of Bethlehem. All these different prophecies. Micah, the book of Micah chapter 5, 2, if you want to write that down. The, uh, Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Today, almost the entire world knows Jesus was born in the tiny village of Bethlehem, which is about five miles away from Jerusalem. What is even more remarkable is that Mary, the mother of Jesus, didn't live in Bethlehem at the time she was pregnant. Rather, she was obligated to go there with her husband Joseph because of a census ordered by the government. Look at that. They didn't know it, but God was orchestrating their life. They didn't know that they were fulfilling prophecy that was written about that, that time 700 years before. They're just going with what, what, what the government said, what, what I'm doing, they're being, but they don't know they're being led by God. They're being led by the Holy Ghost. So if God was orchestrating their life like that to fulfill prophecy, family, you have a choice. God can orchestrate your life. Amen. How many of y'all know that you didn't save yourself? Yes. That if it was up to you, you wouldn't even be here today. Come on. Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on. But God was bringing a, pro God was bringing a prophecy to pass. Because when he was on that cross, he thought of you. He was your joy. He, well, you were his joy. Come on. And when he saved you, I mean, how much of a delight. Come on. How much of an excitement. Ooh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Come on, my baby, my child made it. My child got saved. Hallelujah. They received the blood. They were, they, my, 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 the cross wasn't in vain. Come on, I was never a man, but, but I became a man for my child, and they received salvation. Come on, how excited was Christ? How excited was God? The Holy Ghost, hallelujah. That's what the Bible tells us, that when one person comes to repentance, all of heaven rejoices. Come on, rejoice, hallelujah. 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 Woo! Glory. Thank you, Jesus. That sounds like all of heaven right there. <laughs> Can you imagine all of heaven rejoices? And it may not seem like that much right now, but think about it. What did Christ have to go through? There's no time with God. God has no beginning. He has no end. But he decided to begin and be a man. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. He decided that I'm going to allow the devil to put his hands on me. Yeah. I'm going to allow man who I made to put, put their hands on me. I'm going to allow my flesh to, to get cut open. Yeah. All for you. Yeah. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So think about it. What if Mary resisted? Oh, amen, it's the Holy Ghost. Give God, give God, give God the glory, praise God. And my, and my pastors, praise God. What if Mary resisted? I mean, we could go on. Abraham and, you know, down the line. Everybody has a choice. Everybody has a decision to make. But just know that if you choose to make that, which I know you, are, you have, make the right choice and allow, allow the Holy Spirit, allow our pastors, allow God to orchestrate your life, 
even if it, you may go through troubling times, just know that God is getting you to that right place at the right time. So when you hear that trumpet sound, you're at the right place at the right time in the right spirit with the right clothes. Come on. Come on with that, with that, with that. You may not see it on yourselves now, but you're going to get a white robe on, praise God. Come on, no stains. Because bleach, bleach can't get it off. Come on, you can't use bleach. Come on, praise God, hallelujah. Only thing is the blood. Come on, so allow, come on, allow, come on. Somebody say allow, I'm, allow, I'm going to allow God to orchestrate my life. Mary had to travel, <laughs> excuse me, Mary had to travel by ox cart or, you know, a cart where the ox is and, you know, they push the cart or drag the cart or on the back of a donkey 90 miles <laughs> from her and Joseph's home in Nazareth. That's powerful because now that was her situation. She was pregnant. That was her situation. Now, what, 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 what are we going through? God was actually leading them. What is God leading you to do? Come on. God was getting them ready to give birth to the Messiah. Come on. God's getting you ready. Glory to God. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. For an eternal bliss. For an eternal everlasting home. Like in Psalms 23, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and forever. Come on. And there will not be an end to it. So God is orchestrating you to be, to be uh, raptured, to be taken up, and to go to your mansion that's waiting for you in heaven. <laughs> Remember, it's not, he's, not, he's not waiting to build. It's being built right now. And God knows your heart and desires better than you know him. <laughs> Amen? So if you like pink, if you, if, you, if you like dogs and, you know, cats and all that, expect that to be waiting for you on the other side. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can give God some praise. It's your mansion. Come on. Come on. Thank God for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So she traveled 90 miles. She did this shortly before giving birth. The most dangerous time of a woman's pregnancy for traveling such a great distance. Right, right. Like 90 miles, what was that, from here to what, Baltimore? How, how far is that? I don't know. If, I mean, so look at that. Pregnant, traveling that great distance on rough roads. But she had no choice, for she had to comply with the state ordered registration of all the people at that time. After which she and Joseph could return home. So I'm not sure if y'all caught that, but they had to comply with a, govern a government ordinance, which led her to travel that like that, because you had to. I'm not sure what the repercu repercussions was or the consequences, but they had to do it. Now what is, what is God telling you to do? God's government, God's kingdom that you have to comply to. Come on, God ain't slapping nobody upside the head now, so it ain't, it ain't, it ain't that deep. I hope not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise God. I don't know what God got going on. You know, everybody's different. <laughs> Praise God. So, <laughs> amen. <laughs> so everybody say, I'm going to comply. <laughs> I'm not going to deny. I'm going, I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to orchestrate me. To orchestrate me. Amen? Amen? So she had no choice, for she had to comply with the state-ordered registration of all the people after which she and Joseph could return home. So God give, give, has given us the vision of this church. Come on. Kingdom mandated. It shall be called the living water. Wow. Come on. KCGs. Soul winning is kingdom order. It's kingdom mandated. I'm going to leave it at that. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. So keep in mind that if Jesus had been born a little earlier or a little later, he could have been in the wrong place. Remember I said that God was accurate, that Christ is accurate, that he is accurate enough to ensure that you will receive your place, that you will be with him in eternal bliss. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, give it up for Jesus. Give it up for Jesus. So don't give up on God, family, like the song, because he won't give up. I can't sing it now, but <laughs> don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. And he didn't give up on you thousands of years ago. When your parents, 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 they weren't even thinking about it, you know. Come on, so allow, allow God to fulfill that promise through you. Come on, allow him to, because he, he, he don't fail. So if you can, think for a second. Don't allow him to fail through you. Obviously, you can't, but, you know, just for context, praise God. Praise God. Amen. So he would have been in the wrong place. Prophet Micah's 700-year-old prophecy was fulfilled exactly as predicted. Wow. Jesus was born in the right place at the right time. Come on, y'all y'all, y'all know, y'all know the story. Praise God. It wasn't in the city next door. Come on. In the right place at the right time. So you, you guys can be encouraged with that. Come on, as long as I'm in church, as long as I'm following the vision, I know that God's going to lead me at the right place at the right time, going through the right door, the right spouse. Come on. The right car, the right house, the right blessing. Praise God. Because God got it for you. Can you say amen? amen? He was born at the right place at the right time. Some might say this was, more, uh, was a mere coincidence. But that is more difficult to believe than it is to believe that God was at work bringing about the fulfillment of something he said would happen. Yet another prophecy is that Jesus will be born of a virgin. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. If you want to write that down. Which we know was the case because Mary had not yet married Joseph. This was all before. <laughs> Jesus was born in Bethlehem of a virgin during a, brief, a very brief window of time that had been predicted 700 years earlier. Only the Bible provides that kind of prof uh, prophetic accuracy. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what is the next prophecy that has to come to pass? God coming to rapture you. Come on. God coming to take you home. Come on. The Bible says, I'm just passing through. Glory to God. This place ain't my home. I'm a, I'm a pilgrim. Praise God. Somebody say, I'm passing through. I'm, passing through. I'm, going, to I'm going to my heavenly home. Don't focus too much on this home. Come on, it's going to pass. It's already rotten. The moment that you get it, it's already depreciating. Why you say depreciating? <laughs> Amen. But your mansion in heaven is, is never, come on. You know the Bible, it don't rot. No moth can, can be on it. Come on, no rust. Praise God. Come on, but it's got, it's got God material on it. Kingdom material, praise God. If you got streets of gold, imagine what's on your house, praise God. Come on. Somebody say, I'm going to be ready. I know you're coming, God. I'm going to be ready. Woo, hallelujah. Only God can tell us history in advance. And in doing so, he proves that he is God and that his word is true. Given the track record of more than 500 Bible prophecies fulfilled with 100% accuracy. Not 100 100%. We can confidently call the Bible alone a divinely inspired book. There's no other book like it. Come on, no book of Mormon. And somebody try to give that to you, man. Slap that thing. No, I don't believe that. Come on, I believe in, my, in the word of God, the Bible. I know where I'm going. 
Come on, I know I got a mansion for me waiting in heaven. Praise God. I don't know what's waiting for you, but I know what's waiting for me. Praise God. Come on, a home everlasting with Jesus. Come on, if Christ can't pass away, if God can't pass away, you can't either. Woo! And I drop that on you. <laughs> so far, we have considered only a few of the messianic prophecies that Christ fulfilled during his lifetime. Remember, he fulfilled at least a hundred more. No one in the history of the world can come even close to fulfilling that many. Of all the billions of people who have ever lived, no one can say they have fulfilled the 109 prophecies that affirm he alone is the true son of God. So family, if, come on, if that's true, then how many of y'all know that, you, come on, you want to be ready? Come on, when my God says it's going to come to pass, all these prophecies already came to pass. God saved me. I got the Holy Ghost. Come on, I know for sure that he's coming back to get me. Come on, I can't, I can't give up. Come on, I, I got to keep pushing. I got to keep following the vision, following instructions. Come on. I cannot be troubled. I have to follow, I follow the way of my pastors and, and the way Christ has put before me. Come on, can you say amen? The only person who can make that claim is Jesus. And if he fulfilled all the prophecies about his first coming, we can know, I mean, so that, that alone, he fulfilled the prophecy he was going to come 2,000 years ago. And he told you he's going to come back again. So if he came the first time, then you can be sure he's going to come for a second time. And the people back then, they didn't, they didn't know. They couldn't see it. How many disciples was following Jesus? It was a multitude at first. And then it came down to 12, and he only had 11. He couldn't keep even 12 of them, 12 all of them. Amen? So we have to find out which person are we, praise God. But all of you will make it in Jesus' name. Come on, when that trumpet sounds, when it comes in the, in the twinkling of an eye, quicker than that, come on, and you'll be flying up to meet Christ in the air. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. So how can we know this? How can we know this, Jalen? That he's going to come back. Well, I already told you in the book of John, Chapter 14, verses 2 to 3. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 2 to 3. He said he would. Remember, if it was not so, I would have never told you. If it was not so, I would have told you it wasn't so. Anything that I say to you is going to come to pass. And maybe he didn't give you an audible voice to it, but he said it, he said it through the word of God. He said it through his word, the Bible. So you will be wise. To listen. Not everybody listened when he came the first time. Not everybody could see it. Is that God? God? That man? Nah, man. Eating his flesh and what? Drinking his blood? Nah, I can't be. Let's go home. The game is on. We got some fried fish and uh, some bread with butter on it, man. Got some fresh butter out the store. Put them put on that thing. How many of y'all like butter bread? Praise God. Yeah, but some people were going home at that time. They couldn't see it. But we, well, we prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ that you all be able to see this next coming. There will not be you in the name of Jesus Christ. They will not have eyes to see, but God will get you ready. Come on, you won't, you won't give up on God. Come on, that God will take you to the rapture. Come on. He will take you up in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. The Bible says that, and this is what I was uh, quoting to you earlier, John chapter 14, verses 2 to 3, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law to all fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass away until one, uh, one jot, the, the, the Bible says, of the, of the word of God, of the letters, of the verses, that will never pass away. That's how much faith and trust you can have in God's promises and prophecies. So when you go outside, you can look, look, at, the, look at the moon and the planets and all that. And you, can look at, you can say, 
that's going to pass away before God's word passes away. Woo! Somebody said, that's fire. Glory to God. So what are you worried about? What are you troubled about? If God's word is on the inside of you, what is stopping that word from coming to pass? What is stopping that word from getting you from one place to the next destination, from the next blessing, from, from uh, getting you to the rapture? Come on. Because God's word can't pass. It, it don't. The Bible said that God's word was tried, uh, purified seven times in the furnace of fire. Jesus was the word. Yeah. Come on. And, and he couldn't get stopped. The devil couldn't stop him. So what's stopping you? And the word of God is on the inside of you. Everybody say, I'm going to be devoted to the word of God. I'm going to be an avid reader of the word of God. I'm going to be compliant to the word of God. And if you want the word to work for you, then you must work the word. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Come on, somebody pop it up for Jesus real quick. Come on. And say glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this promise. Thank you, Lord God, for this message. Hallelujah. It's insight and revelation, Lord. And he's preparing a place for you right now. What's today? Uh, July 27, 2022. He's preparing a place for you today. If, if some of y'all win souls uh, on your way home, boom, you got, you, got, you got more material to your home. Come on. Right now. Praise God. So you don't want to miss it. So in conclusion, family, the best part of the rapture teaching of Jesus is that in addition to the incredible place he has been preparing for you, we have this promise in John chapter 14, verse 3, that he will come again and receive you to himself. Come on, you are his pride and you are his joy. I, I, I know I don't mean I said that in the scripture per se, but... You know, you are his pride and joy. You are his joy. He did all this for you. Come on, not for a planet, not for a universe. No, for you. He wants to spend eternity with you. Come on, you are made in his image. And he's in love with you. Come on, somebody say, God's in love with me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow him to love me for eternity. Hallelujah. As the psalmist said, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, verse 6. There are many wonderful promises in the Bible about what life will be like for us in heaven. But none surpass the promise that we will live forever. Come on. With God's only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. But he even says I mean, that, that he's, you're going to reign with him. And you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Come on, hallelujah. So as you look around and see all the things happening in the world, if you can't see it today, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> right? It's going to happen sooner than we think. I mean, and again, to remind you, God told our pastor the rapture could happen at any moment. What does the Bible say? In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. So this may happen sooner than we think. For prophecy scholars have found at least 19 credible signs that we are living in or close to the fulfillment of these signs. Amen. Amen. So family, with all that being said tonight, and we thank God for his word, let's prepare for his coming. Let's prepare for his second return. If he came the first time and he said he's going to come again, how many of y'all know he's coming back again? Come on, for you, for your family. Come on. But you got to make sure that you're going to be ready. Follow, follow the vision. You know what God's telling you to do. Come on, if the pastor gave you an instruction, follow those instructions, KCGs. Come on, tith uh, Tithing. All friends, whatever God's putting on your heart, soul winning. And allow God to orchestrate your life. Allow God to, to prepare you and to get you ready for when he comes back. Can you say amen?
Because it can happen at any moment. So let's prepare family. Let's continue to be faithful uh, to all those different things. And uh, let's all get rapture. Praise God. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet if you can. Just give God glory. Give God glory. Come on, clap your hands, lift your hands, and just thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right, family. Well, let's throw up them V's. V stands for? Victory. Because? We win. Now, let's declare as we always do. I'll reach my world. I'll reach my world. Turn your neighbor so you'll reach your world. And together, and together, we'll reach the world, we'll reach the world with, the with the gospel of the kingdom, of the kingdom and, glory, and glory and in excellence. And, in excellence. and always remember, and all, all things, things work together, together for your good. Heaven on earth, Heaven on earth. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, hug somebody on your way out. Amen and be blessed. Hallelujah. <laughs>